At Alpha Morgan Capital, we know that wealth creation is not just for you alone, but for the next generation as well. Mm, that's my boy! Congratulations, dear! <laughs> we at Alpha Morgan understand that every effort you make daily is a journey to create sustainable wealth. That's why Alpha Morgan stays committed to helping you sustain generational growth in wealth so you can focus on other things. Alpha Morgan. Funds management, investment banking, financial advisory. Alpha Morgan, your investment banking institution. Go to www.alphamorgan.com. Call 081-5171-7171. Alpha Morgan. Growing your wealth. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me stand on existing, all existing protocols, as they say in Nigeria. Now, uh, there's a Chinese saying that may we live in interesting times. If these are not interesting times, I don't know what can be more interesting. But in China, they also say if you go to war, you dig two graves, one for your enemy and one for yourself. So I think that uh, we, uh, what we are going to be talking about this morning, very simple, we're going to be talking about the global economy, domestic investment climate, is leading economic indicators that are relevant to investors, the policy outlook, political update, and then the risks. So let me start by making three very important comments. One, that Nigeria is more globally connected with the rest of the world today. So no part of the world is disconnected. You can see what's happening in Russia, what's happening in COVID, what happened with fiscal stimulus. Everything shows you that whatever happens in one part of the world affects all the others. It is said that when the US sneezes, the rest of the, the, rest of the world catches cold. So that's number one. Number two is that investors are worried. Investors are worried. Investors are concerned. In fact, some are alarmed. Some are in panic. So all of us in this room, Everybody is concerned. We, we have not lost uh, our vision or our goal to maximize returns. We've not lost our goal to preserve capital. We've not lost our goal to actually improve our alpha, right? We have not lost our goal to ensure that we are perform inflation. But at the same time, we are all concerned. Almost every portfolio in the world today, except for a very few, are, in the, are underwater. That's fine. There are times like that. Thirdly, there is a connection between policy, promises, and politics. The three Ps, policy, promises, and politics. You cannot divorce one from the other. So we are going into an era of political uncertainty as well. So we cannot, you know, whether we like it or not, when there's life, there's hope. So let's start off very quickly today. What's happening in the world and how does it affect us? What is common in the global environment and common to Nigeria? Where I come from, they say if when night becomes day or day becomes night, it, Everybody's house is affected. You cannot say, I want night in my house and there'll be darkness there. Oh yes, we've had eclipse and all of that, but that's not. So this is the, this is the, this chart shows you about a global investor like you and I, a domestic investor, we're having a headache because we can't make sense of what's going on. Why? It's high inflation, monetary policy tightening, currency weakness, promises, hopelessness, insecurity, everything. So problems are there, we know that. Problem is that in some cases, why people get despondent is because if, if you know that the problem is only for a short period, if you know you're going to be hungry only for till afternoon, then you can, but if you know you're hungry and you know that food is not coming anywhere, the fear of perpetual hunger is enough to kill you. Right, so that's where we are. This 
this investor, so then shall I say, well, maybe after the, maybe after the electron, in any case, whatever happens, this administration must go. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, what is it that is baffling? So look at that. Never in 41 years, US inflation, even though it's at 8.3 years. The UK, 40 years. Nigeria, 17 years high. South Africa, five year high. Ghana, 21 year high, 33.9%. Uganda, five year high. Kenya, 13 year high. So everybody, everybody, everybody is affected. The last time the US had this kind of inflation, Paul Walker was the Federal, chairman, Federal Reserve Bank chairman. And interest rate, believe it or not, 1981-82, I think. That's what the records show. Interest rates went as high in the US, 25, 20%, 22%. So I want you to imagine. Today, interest rates are four or five in the US and people are dying. They, for the past 10 years, they've been at 2%. I want you to imagine where, what it was. So what is the effect of high interest rates? There's an inverse relationship between interest rates and asset values. So if interest rates have increased sharply in the last few months, what will happen to growth? What will happen to asset values? What will happen to the stock market? And that's what we're seeing. Stock markets are diving. Alternative asset classes are in turmoil. Markets are in turbulence. Just look at look at Nigeria. Fourteen percent interest rate, fifteen point five. The US, two point five to three point two five. In fact, from almost zero, the US interest rates are three point two five. The UK, forget it. 2.25, European Union, 1.25. This interest rate is zero. Ivory Coast, up, right? Kenya, from 7.5 to 8.25. They did another one yesterday. South Africa, part of the inflation is coming up. South Africa went up. These rates have not been seen in these countries for decades. So what does it mean? We've seen inflation at record highs. We see interest rates at record highs. Therefore, we should expect to see stock markets at record low. The question is how long will it last? And when will it come back? We're also seeing currencies, plunging currencies. Okay. The UK pound has lost, in the, la in the last three months, has lost 11% of its value. Right? So 1.11, it actually went to 1.02. The euro has lost 6% in last month. South Africa has lost, South African rand has lost 15% two months. Ghana has lost 33% of its value in since June. Angola, just 1.6%. Rwanda, 4%. And look at Naira. The Naira is 740 now, but the Naira is lost 17%. So if you look across, the Naira has even done better than one uh, than Ghana CD. Apart from that, so Ghana and Nigeria are probably the worst. The worst, the worst performers. <clears throat> so now look at commodity prices. Commodity prices are all ratcheted up because of what do you call it because of. Uh, <clears throat> I set it up because, uh, because of the Ukraine war, because of the fears of recession and stagnation. So look at Brent. Today is about 90, I know it changes every minute. So it's about 88, 89 or something like that, or 90. But this, this price of crude has gone all the way to $127 last quarter. So it is down by about 12%. Wheat is down 24%, even though it's beginning to climb up, climb up again. 
Nays is down 15%. WTI is the other crude, so it doesn't matter one will reflect the other. Then cocoa, cocoa is down by 5.49%. And this is main crop season. This is the main harvest. Yes, so. Now, <clears throat> now, what is happening now? High interest rates, high inflation, right? Now we begin to see and growth is beginning to slow. Major economies are, but the UK has just announced positive growth of 0.9% this morning. So what you're seeing there is probably not just out of date for this morning. So, but, the analysts also said that even though it went up, it's still going, it's going to go contract again. So they are definitely on the path of path to recession. So you can see the US down, UK down, European Union, China. China, let's put it this way. China reported consistently for the past 10 years, growth above 7%. Now all of a sudden, we are talking about 0.4. That is one hell of a contraction. Or slow down the call. European Union from 5.5 to 4.2. So we have it sure. There you are. So what is happening? In addition to this, Russia is a big problem. Well, let me spend a few minutes talking about the Russia Ukraine crisis. Because we seem to see it in the context of, oh, Ukraine has captured this, Russia has captured that. No. Russia announced this morning, or will announce this morning again. Yeah? the annexation of four of Ukraine's provinces as part of Russia. That's against the United Nations Charter. That is against all known principles of civility. So if Russia is breaking all the rules, announcing the annexation, can you imagine that we go to Kutano now, Nigeria to go and say we have taken two or three provinces and say this, this is part of Nigeria now. Nobody will allow you to do that. That's why there's a world order. Right? So that, and that is what is happening. They just gone there. First of all, about 10, 10 years ago, they took Crimea. Now, taking this, uh, and then also four provinces are taking that. Oh, they do call the Russians living there, Russian speaking people. So I want you to imagine that we go, Nigerian army goes and captures Kutonu and Kotonobo. I say, we have, we have your right people living there, so we're taking it. It's not part of Nigeria. Or we go to Cameroon, capture one or two places, and say, ah, we have an ethic, Calabar speaking people there. But we are not part of us. You can't do that. That's number one. Number two is that it is a, it's a war about sanctions, financial sanctions. Those sanctions don't seem to be working. But the sanctions have made the price of oil higher. Russia has been available from the price of oil. And Russia has been able to bypass. Yes, it has disrupted a lot of things in Russia, but that's what it is. So the, 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 and the, the military war, the economic and financial and trade war, to make Russia succumb and the rest of the world to know that you don't take on the big brother, you don't take on the United States. So that's what it is. So more than 30 countries are imposed sanctions on Russia. And this is the reality. Russia's imports have dropped by over 50% in the position of the sanctions. Gas shortages are happening. European Union is cutting gas use, but price of gas and energy now. And winter is right at the corner. It's coming in. Technically speaking, as from Monday, no, as from Saturday, that's tomorrow. Winter, the winter season kicks in. Really, not really. That's the end of fall, but November one is beginning of winter. So what's happening to in all of this, we've seen throughout the world, this and other equity markets, right? People are afraid. They have the uncertainty of what's going to happen to the price of oil, what's going to happen to interest rates and debt levels, effective interest rates, what's going to happen to consumption patterns, and what's going to happen to new investments. So that's what markets are looking at. We have Porsche, the biggest 
the most sophisticated car company in the world. Uh, they, did a, they did a public IPO, and in spite of what people rushed into Italy. I know there's all sorts of speculation that Porsche and Apple are designing their own electric car. So two, two iconic brands. And I can, you can imagine what will happen if they, when they say, when it's release their own car uh, as a joint venture. It'd be quite interesting to see what happens. So global investor concerns, yeah, they're similar to Nigeria. Ukraine was affecting everybody. It's affecting us in Nigeria with play. Supply chain disruption globally is affecting us here. We have our own domestic supply. So we had the two, we have supply chain disruptions of our own president. Midterm elections in the US is in November. We have our own election. We have more around 48 days left to the election and campaigns are kicked off and it's going to be very interesting. I'm just reading in Bloomberg right now, uh, Nigeria's most popular candidate uh, promises to revamp the budget. So they already, the international community are already betting with one of the candidates already, right? Based on their reading, okay? Um, real rate of return uh, dropping. In other words, the rate of inflation is higher than rates of returns these days. But then in the US and other, the inflation rate is kind of transient, while in Nigeria it is both structural and transient. Fears of a recession are lingering in Nigeria where well, I think where if you take the key sectors, oil, uh, one or two other sectors, those sectors are in recession. Oil has had negative good now for at least the last four or five quarters. Okay. Corporate margins are being threatened. And we can see it on both sides. And there are taxes, right? taxes and tariffs. Okay, so that's what we're seeing. Now, what, where are we? One, we have the big markets in China. The Chinese markets are down 10% so far. The S&P down in this month alone, right? This month alone, down 3.4%. Johannesburg Stock Exchange down 4.24%. The Ghanaian Stock Exchange down 2.25%. Nigeria Stock Exchange is down 5.12% this month alone, September. Okay, so asset managers are looking because asset managers are now global. You know, right? That's why you see a lot of people on this call for Alpha Morgan are all global. They are Nigerian investors, diaspora investors, and all of them. So Asset managers are looking for how they can see opportunity. And like I said, in all my calls here, short term, you look for value. Long term, you look for direction. So where is the value now? It's very, very hard to find value, but there's some. But more importantly is that you can see that you can find direction. Okay. Um, so, Alternative assets classes, looking for opportunities, early, 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 early stage entrepreneurship and all of that, that's what's happening. Big opportunities in uh, carbon, uh, global warming, anti-global warming stocks and all of that. So what's the investment climate? Nigeria's total capital imports fell by $1.5 billion, it fell by, let's see. Well, by 2.4% to 1.5 billion, 4 billion. But all oh, short term money, hedge fund, and Nigeria money is finding their way back. Pre pandemic levels, to, to, for you to see it, in Q2 2019, $6 billion came in that quarter. This quarter, only $1.54 billion came in. So compare, there we are. Due to higher global interest rate, I can forex capacity. Foreign portfolio investors, you know, so, but the other areas of money is that trade credit rose, that is, we are getting a few more loans, but loans are expensive and they have to be paid back while investments are there to create jobs. So this is what we are seeing, Q3. U.S. equities, if you invest in U.S. equities, you lost 3.4% in Q3 alone. Nigerian equities, you lost 5.12 in Q3. 
Treasury bills are now going for 10%. That is if one year treasury bills are real estate. Believe it or not, it's all been valued by 35%. So it looks like real estate seems to be, but what real estate is real estate, what type of real estate? So you're getting good rents. And if you build to buy, no, build to sell, you're also making money. Okay, that's the Nigerian stock market. Everything is negative. And what is more instructive is that if you take Airtel out of the equation, you are getting, you are getting uh, the all, all, every sector here is in negative territory. So let's just look at what's happening, this connection between Nigerian market and the economy. One, look at the Senate. If you invested in Senate, the sector growth for financial services, sector growth is about almost three or four percent. No GDP growth for financial institutions, 20 percent. Why revenue growth then it is 17 percent. Profit after tax went up by five percent, but year to date return on that stock is about 20.5 percent. Let's take another one. Presco. Presco, crop production and farmer manufacturing. GDP growth in the sector of agriculture is 1.54, but Cresco's revenue grew by 94%. Look at the disconnection. The sector is growing by 1%, while the revenue of the company has gone up by 94%. Why? Inflation. What was the price of palm oil? So two things happening, there's value and volume. They've increased their volume and they've increased their value by increasing price. And that's what you're seeing here. Their profit after tax went up by 33%. And if you bought Cresco this year, right, in the last one year, well, the value of the stock has gone up by 62%. So if you borrowed, if you borrowed 100,000 to buy Cresco stock, you'll be worth 162,000 now. So you pay back your 100,000 and you keep 62,000 as your profit. But I'm not asking you to go and do that because there are some people that borrowed 100,000 to buy stocks and the value of that stock, those stocks are now 40,000. And they have to pay the 100,000 and be left with 60,000 negative on the table. So I'm not advising to go there, but think about it. Don't be the only fool in town. If you, if you, are, if you are too greedy because of press code and you wanted something more, I'm not sure that's more than more. And you say, okay, no, let me try now. You're I don't try this press code. The sector of Manufacturing went up by 5%. Now, Yuan Brewery's revenue grew by 31%. And look at their profit after tax, 143%. But the market does not believe that these earnings are not extraordinary. So, if you bought Yuan Brewery's stock at the beginning of this year, you are down 21% year to date. That's the story. What next? Global equities market likely to trend downwards, yes, but then before recovering, I think that there are too many moving parts and that I'm not going to call it, but I think that we have seen this thing and I've been in this market for years, for decades. I've seen markets go down and come back up. So I will not be surprised if on Friday today, markets begin to recover again. Okay, what should investor be doing now? Come on, maximize your return. Diversify, look for other asset classes, but more than anything, look for early stage uh, and look for intellectual property driven companies. Biogen stock has rallied in the last two days. One of the biggest ailments facing the world today is that Alzheimer and dementia. People get to a particular age and their minds cannot work. They can't even remember themselves, they can't even remember their names. They haven't taken that into isolation. Somebody, one of a former teacher of mine, we didn't know he had Alzheimer's. He woke up in the morning, he went to the bathroom to brush his teeth with his towel around his waist. Then nobody, after they just walked out of the house, nobody, nobody saw him, nobody knew. 
it was the next day people came to call the, the family members that they saw him in another town in Sapele. He had walked all the way from Wari to Sapele with his towel around his waist and his toothbrush. He didn't know what he was doing. Okay. So Azaima, for Pyrogen, in the last two days, I've come up with it. In fact, it was not curable, degenerative, no cure. For Alzheimer's, these guys came up with it, with a tablet or something, a certified as a cure, med medication for Alzheimer's. For the past 100 years or 200 years, people have been looking at this ailment and there's nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing. Now, finally, so you can imagine what happened to that stock in the last two years. Because it's something, there are millions of people with that, that element. Lots of people. And it's, the thing about it is that it happens slowly. It doesn't happen. You just start forgetting things, forgetting the, no, no, that the next thing goes off. Even Ronald Reagan, the president of the United States, had Alzheimer's. Margaret Thatcher, in the end, and these are very active people and all that. So all of a sudden, their minds, there are some, there are some things that happen, and it, some of it is genetic. Just, you lose it. You won't remember anything. You won't even, you'll be looking at your, you don't even know their name or anything. So, well, that's the way it was. So, what I'm trying to say is that you combine your intellectual property because that's a breakthrough, right? It's a complete breakthrough, right? It's like where the people that find the cure for uh, the antiretroviral uh, drugs for people who had HIV. Before HIV was a kiss of death now. You know? So now, inflation. Indicators relevant to what's happening to inflation, what's happening to interest rates, what's happening to exchange rate, what's happening to GDP. Those are the things that we're not going to go too deeply into it. But this is what it's looking like. When the reds are more than the greens, then you know that it's trouble. So on this page alone, there are eight indicators. Six are in red, two are in green. So this is, uh, so two out of it, 25% is in green, 75% is in red. What are the ones in red? Exchange rate, stock market capitalization, external reserves, inflation, money supply, and GDP growth. What are the ones in green? 91 treasury bills and bond yields, not really. What's important? What did the MP, MPC do? It took the third time in, in six months, cumulatively, we've increased interest rates by 400 basis points. Never heard of it before. The last time, for two decades, we didn't increase interest rates by 400 basis points. Not only that, we increased the CRR by 5%. I brought up my calculator, 5% of total assets. And they say, ah, oh, no, 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 no. The point is that effectively, the central bank has already debited them. So they were already holding over 40% of the assets. So there was nothing more, no more threat. Central bank taking them around. So the market has, market young. So they don't care. What, what, what drove this? All the usual currency, inflation, growth. But that's not the issue. The real issue is this. You can see 91 day trade bills here. You can see 360 body and 10 year bond. All of them below the rate of inflation. Okay, so as investors, please bear that in mind. So, what, is the, what are the implications of this? Borrowing costs will increase, your mortgage rates will increase, your credit card costs will increase, even the loan sharks will increase their costs. And you dare not default if you are taking money from the loan shark, they will finish it. Debt service burden for Nigeria will increase. Uh, there, will, there will be some cost push inflation, not demand pull inflation, because when interest rates increase, the actual, some of it can be passed on as a cost to the portfolio. There could be some cost push inflation. And uh, stock markets, obviously, are affected on the seat. Sectors are affected, sectors that are interest rate sensitive. Banking, manufacturing, and telecommunication. There are some sectors that are exchange rate sensitive, almost all of this as well. Or exchange rate neutral. Then, seeing Nigerian inflation, 
bears on a basket. And I think the numbers are now beginning to reflect more of reality than cosmetics. Uh, so we have it at 20.54, uh, 52. We think that it, may, it might increase slightly again. We thought it was going to taper, but our analysts that went to the market and gave me a different picture. So we'll wait and see whether they can get it right again. Current currency in circulation fell by 2%. Um, how that happens, I don't know. Basically, what happens is that after every three months or every two months, all the currencies that are not cannot be man are brought together in boxes and incinerated. In other words, they so Union Bank will bring five billion naira of what we call mutilated notes. Those notes that have become almost like uh, not only that it's soft like a like a towel. Right here. So you bring all of them, and somebody else will count all of them. That, I've done that assignment before one time, just temporarily, when I was in commercial banking. Yeah, I was in charge of going to certify that these notes are no longer valid. Then they will sign. It's in a room where there's no window, and all of these women who are note counters with machines and all of that. And then, and every bundle has the name of a bank. You check when you set right. Then from that room, the money goes in for incineration to be burnt. And then the bank are giving new notes mm -hmm. in return. Uh, there was a scandal one time where the money that was supposed to be burnt was stolen in Ibadan, right? So, so you take you take two or three billion naira in for incineration, and one billion naira disappears, and there's no way you can know it because there's no name on it, nothing, and nobody nobody can read the number. Of course, the money finds its way into the Dubai market, and also and basically you have increased money yes. supply and affect prices. So, and it can so when you say that the money is a currency circulation fell by two percent. It means that what has been incinerated is more than what has been given back. Okay. So I think that's one of the things you must know. So why is there inflation? And what are the causes of inflation? We are beginning to see uh, an update here, I think. Yes, that for 6.9% of the causative factors that lead to inflation, uh, exchange rate passed through. This was as high as 76% two months ago. In other words, the inflation you're seeing today, 50% of the cost more or less approximately is because of weakness of the Naira. 13.7% of it is um, due to um, the diesel, 13.7. Okay, money supply saturation is 13.7%. And um, this 11% is diesel, I think. Diesel and aviation fuel and kerosene, 11.6%. Exogenous shocks are 32 and money supply growth is actually, this this 129 is what? That's supply. Okay, growth in money supply, and this is, So anyway, uh, so basically the things that inflation stocking factors are money supply, diesel, and uh, to a limited extent, uh, liquidity, excess liquidity. Okay, so you have excess liquidity, and then you have, which, which is another proxy for demand pool. I haven't been able to get my head around how GDP growth can lead to inflation emissions, but you see. Now, inflation likely to start easing in Q4 because of this. You can see that there's a harvest coming. Our harvest has started, all of you are in the harvest committee in the church and all that. And Christmas is here. Global food prices are begin will start to be declined because I think there will be some. I suspect that after the hype, that Russia and the United States will come to the table and negotiate with Ukraine. 
GDP in Nigeria increased by 3.5.22. We think it will increase, but not as much as that in Q3, because there's a delayed effect on so many of these things that are threatening the economy. So where are the sectors expanding? And we are the stocks, right? right? So you can see that road transportation, there's ABC transport. Coal mine, I don't know of any stuff that use coal. Water supply, I don't know anybody who does that. Quarrying. Quarrying, I know that Dangote Cement and others. And that post and courier services, and then broadcasting. So this is what we are seeing. And those are the sectors I explained. But now, what is more interesting is that sectors that are contracting and slowing. Those are the ones that employ people. Those are the ones that have exposure, the banks have exposure to. So if, for example, a sector like rail transport, if I assume that there was a quoted company, or a company that is doing rail transport, and the rail transportation system breaks down, then the bank, not only the rail transportation investors will lose their money, the bank that lends the money to the rail transporter will lose his money. The people that invest in the bank will have to suffer that. So it's important that we see this. Then there's crude oil, livestock, and all these areas. So the ways the ones that are slowing, in other words, what we are saying is that threatened sectors in this economy are the ones that you are exposed to in the markets. So this is just GDP growth lingering around. So we are the sector, we are the opportunities for investment. We, we, we continue and we believe that the big telecom players are good. And let me tell you a little bit about 5G technology. 5G technology is about speed, intensity, and very, very clear signals. So if, for example, first and foremost, 5G facilities are in Nigeria, but the, the, the device manufacturers to enable 5G for you to be able to use it. Apple has not enabled, Apple are going to enable Nigeria in October. Samsung, I think, has enabled. Mm -hmm. So even if you have a 5G phone, uh, you cannot, you can only use 4G if you have an iPhone, okay, until they enable you. But Samsung has allowed for 5G. So what does it mean? You can, uh, you can use it on your laptop and all that. Your iPad, maybe, your iPad is Apple. Now, if you are downloading a movie, for example, right? And you press the pause button. Only that part which you are downloaded before you press the pause button will be charged to your data bank. But in 5G, the moment you click download, within one second, everything is, right? Therefore, it will consume, you will, you will have fantastic, service, but you are going to pay for it. Pay big time. Use it battery life, and use it power. Be careful, be very clear. If you are doing a video call, your image will be as clear as it come. Very, very clear, you know? Then, but the most the people, the beneficiaries of this thing, and where it's going to catch you are your children. Gamers, it is fantastic for video games and all of that. So all, almost all the children who are playing video games. So that's where the money is going to be. So I want us to take a look. And there's a big opportunity there for IG. So I, I continue to bet on Airtel and MTN. And also the providers, the, the infrastructure providers for the telcos. Also, the payment service banks who are also providing things. I'm going to do well. Okay. But the alternative to 5G, in terms of the, the only thing that is better than 5G is fiber optic. Optic fiber, which means there's a cable. So if you have a main one, of course, it goes like that. But the reality is that you are not going to be carrying your cable everywhere. Right. So, but okay, let me give you an example. Costing. A router for MTN router normally is about 18,000, I think. It's about 18,000. Okay. 24,000. Yeah, include, no, 24,000 includes a, they give you a gift of some bundle. 
part of it. They give you a, a bonus package. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the equivalent 5G router now is 50,000 because of the quality of it. So it's more than twice you know, you know, the, 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 the cost. Okay. Transport and construction, very interesting sector. Why is this interesting? These 27 highways are being concessioned. Hopefully all those concessioning agreements will be in place. So let us take, a, take an example. If Lagos Department Expressway is concessioned, right? From the moment you pass a Kara Bridge, right? Or let us say the toll gate at Alausa, right? Once you enter, you can only exit at two or three places. I don't know where the toll gate is going to be now. You can only exit at Shagamu or Gary or somewhere, Shagamu, right? There's no way there'll be com complete embankment on both sides, right? There'll be drone technology. You paid, uh, there'll be maintenance. So once you enter, nobody can kidnap you and drag you into the bush because the, the, the central reservation will be about almost three or four feet high. So then with concrete, so you cannot go, because the only, the only way to carry out a successful kidnap is that you be able to grab them and, and take them into the forest. But you cannot, because you will have to jump over the road, stop the car and carry the people and throw them over the uh, embankment and start running into the bush. In all of that time, you know, even you to come in, what normally they do, they drive up to the side of the road and pull you into the car and take you into the bush. So that, that's what's gonna happen in all these 27 highways. And so basically investing in those concessioning companies, those infrastructure companies that provide the concession, who will take the road. I know of one that is doing the Lagos Abelkuta Highway. Once it's done, period, end of story. You, there's no way from, from what I know that you go straight. You, you cannot kidnap anybody. Okay, so again, the construction companies that are going to be doing the infrastructure and concession will come. Great opportunities there. Financial services, great. Yeah. Like again, technology, fintechs, and almost all the banks are saying on fintech. But what are we seeing? We are now seeing cash in circulation, 3 trillion only. Total money supply is 48 trillion. So, Cash and circulation as a pattern of total money supply. Huh? The cash and circulation was three trillion, if I remember right, over five, 10 years ago. Money supply at that time was said something trillion. So cash and circulation is static while money supply. What does it mean? It means that there are more electronic payments, there are more um, transactions that are taking place outside. And that's what's going on. Okay. Now, Opportunities in manufacturing, yes. Opportunity in manufacturing where there's a lot of local value add one. Two, companies that can produce a lot and take advantage of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. So I, I keep on looking at Guinness, um, Nestle, uh, Cadbury and others. So if they have the economies of scale and produce, here the average cost of a unit in Nigeria is much lower, they'll be able to sell across to Benin, Cameroon, Ghana and everything, right? So the market becomes, the market is all of Africa while the, the production point is just Nigeria. So those are the things I see as we go ahead. Agriculture, you know, that's agriculture broken out into aquaculture for fish, uh, animal husbandry for uh, uh, poultry and uh, all right, pro, uh, crop production, uh, food processing, uh, you know, so you, you name it, tubers. Uh, so, so when you look at it all the way, so even horticulture, which is for flowers, so you put everything together, there's a massive set of opportunities here to invest. Now let's look at the exchange rates. Um, this is a big elephant in the room. What is happening? One, the biggest problem here is that there's a the true value of a currency. And then there's the, what we call the fear and documentation premium. Typically in developing countries, the true value, when you hear a prior market rate, you discount it by about 30%, and that is because of documentation and all the illegality. 
the more they ask you, the more they ask you, oh, go and bring this, come and arrest you, EFCC, if any politicians sink carrying dollars, on. the more you do that, the more you are increasing the premium on that currency. So there's the fear document. But like we said earlier, if things are difficult, if you are hungry and you haven't eaten in the morning, and you do not know where the next meal is going to come from, you are more likely to die out of the fear of hunger, perpetual hunger than hunger itself. The problem now is that investors are afraid that managing the Naira is, is now beyond the Nigerian authorities' capacity. Um, that is a, that's a very dangerous point. If the Naira, the Naira is weak, oh, but hopefully it will, it will recover. And it's not, Naira is not the only currency that is weak. All the currencies are, are contributed. But the biggest problem between one and the other is if the people are afraid that you are you, are, you reach your wit's end, you know, there are times when people die because they have no confidence in the doctor. When you see the doctor, you know, say, with this doctor, I'm, 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 no, I'm dead already. <laughs> so, so not, not necessarily because of, you say, another doctor will give you a tablet and you will recover, right? Another teacher will teach you mathematics, you will like it. When you see the teacher, you don't like it. You say, no, 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 no. I hate the subject. You know, you know, you are afraid of the teacher, or you are, you have no confidence in the teacher, and then all it now transfers itself to the subject. The same thing is happening, and that's the that's the critical issue here. We are now in a situation where people now believe. So if I wake up today and say that the naira is nine hundred, people say, oh yes, it's nine hundred, because they've come to <laughs> it's become a self fulfilling prophecy. Oh yes, if I say it's one thousand, ah, it is one thousand. But if I wake up now and say the Naira is now 2,600, people say, no, ah, when did that happen? That's what happened. When did that happen? If you say, ah, do you know the Naira is not 2,500? No, no, no. This is a very good. You are joking. Please go away. But if I say, if I say the other way that it is now 900, eh? Oh, let me, uh, let me buy before. That is, those are the major indicators of confidence. All you have to do, just test Call somebody and say, ah, April Fool. Ah, do you know the Naira is now 500? Oh, I beg you. That's the reaction. If you to call the person and say, ah, do you know the Naira is now 800? Eh? Oh, OK, let me go and buy my own before. That is, that is where we are. Uh, I want you to understand that. So we did some analysis. Uh, in June, this was, it was 632 on PPP. It's now 678. But 678 is not a big deal. The truth is that. It's from 682 to 678 is not as much as it was when it was 537. So this, this, this pace of depreciation of the currency has slowed down because people don't have money to buy the currency anymore. Some people have given up that I'm not going anywhere. I'm just let me stay in this country and die here. Okay. That's the way some people are reacting. So I said, well, I'm, let me. Yeah. All right. So that's what you're saying. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail, as, but this market structure is one cause. The regulations and restrictions is second. The third is the fear and the lack of hope and confidence in our, as a country, our capacity to manage our own affairs. And when your own people have lost confidence in you, then that's the most dangerous. You see, external confidence is not a problem. But when you lose internal, if you are a father in the house and the people in the house have lost confidence in you, then you are no longer, you have no choice. You have no, no reason being there. OK, so here we are. We have official rates, prior rate, but it's quite clear that things are not um, going on the way they should be. So where, where did the dollars come from? Non oil exports, they are there. Oil revenue, they are there. Foreign direct investment, probably. But all of these things have dropped. Why have they dropped? Even, even if they're coming in, they're coming in through the back door. So they cannot be captured as part of our official data. And the reason why, in spite of all this, is that the country still exists, is that people have found their way around it. People are, people are buying those dollars. Our booking FX has been banned, mm -hmm. but people are BDCs have been banned, but they are selling. So let's not deceive ourselves. That is the truth. You can't, you can't stop. 
things, the things that are necessary. People will buy it at any price and any cost. So we see our, so we have a problem of exchange rate, we have a problem of debt, we have a problem of poverty, and we have a problem of debt service, and we have a problem of management of public, public issues. So one of the big things that you investors must know is that almost all our loans are euro bonds and all that. From now till the next administration, we are still a moratorium race. But in July 2023, one month, one month after the next president has come in, there's a $500 million bond maturing. $500 million. There's another one maturing in November 2025, $1.12 billion. The one maturing in July 2023 is at 6.37% per annum. The one maturing in November 2025 is 7.63. What do we do? Look for money to pay it? No. You, what you do is to refinance it. So if you have to refinance what you, the interest expense you are paying today is 6.37% per annum. July next year, if you want to refinance that same amount, you'll be lucky to get the money at 11% per annum or 12%. In other words, your cost of paying the interest will double. The exchange rate, the Naira effect will double. So, and so they are maturing bunch of obligations. If you pay 500, pay another billion, pay another billion, you'll be underwater. So what does Nigeria do? You go for refinancing, but to do refinancing, you, must, you cannot just, you know, when, when you go to, when you go to a sophisticated poultry, the biggest fear of a poultry is infection and infections of the chickens come from outside. If you have, you know, there are farms that you feel when you're arriving in the US. Have you been in a farm in the last 30 days? Yes or no? You know those farms, your landing card in the US. Have, any, have you visited and been to any farm? Right in the last Saturday, because there's pig disease, swine flu, and all those things. So, one of the biggest problems is infection. Right? So, how, how could other exogenous factors affect endogenous performance? So, I just want you to put that in mind. Before you do anything, you must go and get clearance from the IMF to see that your policies are right. Before the London Club, Paris Club, and others will reschedule your debt. No, I'm not talking about borrowing. There's, before, before you can borrow new money, you have to say how you're going to pay the existing one or refinance it. After that, then you can say, so Nigeria needs to reschedule its debt needs to raise additional money and needs to be able to manage the existing debt and the new money to the, for the benefit of its people. So these are external results and we're not going to waste too much time on it. We think that it continues to fall because oil is threatening us. This is just the value of the currency, which we've discussed. The policy outlook is that they're going to, money supply is going to manage. I think that interest rates are going to be increased across the board. I think that the central bank is going to move the um, RNA rate. I think it, they did. They went the wrong way yesterday. They went from 436 to 432. Um, so we'll see. I think they're just moving around. This way. nobody can predict. So crawling peg, securitization. One of the big things that in 23, 23 trillion or so, federal government is borrowing has, has drawn overdrawn its account with central bank for the tune of 23 trillion naira. Okay, so let us think about it. The total budget for Nigeria in one year is how much? 20 trillion, right? Uh, what we have overdrawn so far? So even if we take, you no, know, so I'm not trying to put some context here, so I want you to see that. So I've said, we don't, so this is all, there are meetings with the IMF and all of that, but that's not that important. Now politics. This is the map of Nigeria, and there are three main parties in contention here PDP, Labour, and APC. Okay, that's what you're seeing here. But this is a multi dimensional poverty map. Okay, high poverty, 
in the northeast, high poverty in the northwest. Average poverty in the middle belt, and low poverty in theory, same parts of the southeast and southwest. So, and you look at this, that's where there's a correlation between poverty and insurgency. There's correlation between poverty and low educational outcomes. There's a strong correlation between the performance of instability in an area and that of uh, uh, this. So, what's happening? The electorate, there are those that are angry. You can see them on the left there, very angry. No, and nobody's born angry. There are those in the middle of this, those are nurse students are now, they're not just angry, they are frustrated. They've given up and they're running. So suicide rates are up higher. People are immigrating are higher. People, in fact, one or two people have stuck themselves into the engine on an aircraft and they found them because they wanted, they have lost all hope. The anger is one thing, anger is coming within you. Resentment is when anger has got a point where you are now on the point of trying to be aggressive and attack somebody else. So that resentment is leading to this. But then there are those, if things change for the better, who are enthusiastic, who, be, who believe in hope and say, okay, this cannot continue. Maybe the, the, change, the change is about to come. Those are the four segments that we see. So what are the factors that were, you know, there are those deep pockets and disturbing people who are, then there are those who are disruptors who are cannibalizing things. There's the ethnic bias and there's religious influence. These are the four major things that are you know, driving uh, things as we go along. And therefore, if the election were held today, what we are seeing is that we think that nobody, 55% probability that nobody will win in the first round because they will not meet in the middle. Then some 45% say maybe, I, I, I don't agree. I think that the probability of a first round win is much lower than 45%. I think it's more like 25. And a deadlock situation, we had, uh, you know, this crisis during the election is another scenario as well. And therefore, there'll be a runoff and resulting two contestants and a kingmaker. And that, all of this point to the fact that it cannot be a winner takes, takes all situation. Whoever is going to win has to open, has to do well in the economy, has to open up, and has to bring opponents back to the table. So it's going to be a party for everybody. You have to unify the country. There are risks here. Yeah, there are big risks: the Ukraine war, another wave of COVID again, global recession, conflict, nuclear war. Who knows? So what does it mean? Supply chain disruption, Italy, and all of that. So. Basically, that's where we are seeing. There are risks of tightening of monetary policy. There are risks of higher interest rates, sharply higher. There's a risk that oil prices will fall. There's a risk of social unrest. So all of this is happening. So in summary, uh, the investors, we have, we have our one eye is up. Nigeria GDP will slow. It will grow, but it will slow down to uh, right, about 3%. Harvest will help to taper inflation, but not that much. Election spending will spur demand pull inflation because the days have, the things have just started. I don't even know rate will go as low as 450, I think. Uh, not 440 in October, but maybe 450 by December. Uh, if that happens, then we're going to see an appreciation in the in the uh, parallel market, but not, not initially. The fear and lack of confidence has to be probably treated, dealt with if anything happens. Oil price, we don't think it will go higher than $90 to a while, but even if it does, it's gonna come back. And there'll be recession fears in Nigeria. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It's been, um, as usual, a mind 
opening and expanding session. Um, I mean, it's not all doom and gloom. For example, the harvest um, season that you say will taper off inflation, but not everybody shares um, the um, positive outlook. For example, Peter Wankwa says um, he, he, he's basically wondering like which way Nigeria um, and somebody else says, um, even with the harvest, um, with the harvest season that would um, that would come on board, uh, we're likely to see more of a cost push, cost push inflation, um, and um, they just basically want you to shed a bit more light on that. Okay. Oh, sorry, might see more of a demand pull as opposed to cost push inflation, as previously said. So let me uh, address the uh, question of uh, uh, demand pull and cost. No, I think it's a combination of factors, combination of factors. Uh, whether it's demand pull, whether it's cost push, all that I was saying is price of, retail prices have increased compared to the period last year. Okay, so that's given. Uh, but I want you to understand something that if, for example, we have we have a trading partner with most of the people here. I have I have not been there, but many people, if you go out to the market, a lot of things come from a country called Turkey. Turkey has an inflation rate of 80%, 80%. And what did Turkey do last week? Turkey brought down interest rates. Because the Turkish man believes in his own theory of economics. So if the Turkish currency has fallen sharply, so and you are going there, but the price of its goods have increased by 80%. So if you went and bought a Turkish furniture, the price has increased domestically by 80%. The currency has dropped by so much. Net net yes, but your own currency value has also dropped. So the, the expenses are high. So um, quite frankly, how much of this is as a result of bottlenecks? How much of it is because costs have increased? How much of it is because demand has increased? So using interest rate to cure inflation assumes that you are trying to cool off demand, excess demand. But if it is not, if the price rise is not because of excess demand, then you are actually using a machine gun to kill a fly, right? You could still kill a fly without, with a broomstick. Number two, uh, you say every day we're getting close to a solution. Is that true? I, be, I beg to disagree. Uh, trial and error is the order of the day. Fiscal is not exact. Oh, that's, an, that's another angry Nigerian. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, 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 one can understand because you've been hoping for so long and nothing has come out of it. And now you've got to the point where, you know, you know what? I don't care. You guys get out of here. All right? Every day you guys say this, the next time what we see is an outcome that is different. But that is the, that's the theory of life. The biggest thing, the worst thing that happens is for you to be jaded and think that because it's bad, it will continue to get, to continue to get worse. If you now, I've just told you, for example, that even, with, even if you do the right thing and the people don't believe you, they will not, they will not, the market will not correct itself. So we've got to a point where we have exhausted our, what I call our, We have, a, we have a trust deficit in Nigeria. Yeah, policymakers speak and public analysts speak. People just say, look, can you just get out? All I want to know is that this is it. So when you get to that point, you have to be very careful because even when, you, even when things are going right, you will not, you will not even pick it because you, are, you have actually written off things. And you cannot just write off things. You have to, you have to believe. And, and it's not zero or 100. It's a range of... So things start to get better slowly and surely. They will. And then that is where the opportunities come in. The people who make money are those who have seen behind it. Okay, there's a power problem in Nigeria. Okay. I can complain, I can complain, or I can just go and invest in a solar alternative. Those who invest in solar alternatives have made money like bandits in the last two, three years. When diesel was 200, now those people, everybody who has a solar, all the, every house now has solar, right? Okay, so that's what's going on. All right, thank you, sir. 
Um, can you also shed a bit more light on that um, comment you made about the improvement in the iron e window that would reflect in the um, FX market? Iron yes. Yes. First and foremost, I want, I want you to understand that the total amount of money in, a, in an economy is fixed. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Two, that demand is a function of income. Do we agree? Three, that the price of a commodity is a function of demand. Therefore, the price of commodities is a function of total income, All right? Now, so if your income is fixed and you have two commodities to buy, right? Let us assume that your total income is 100 and there are two commodities and there are, there are 50 Naira. You can only buy one of one and one of the other, right? Okay, now, if I then reduce the price of one, right? I can buy more of that one and one of the other, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, let us say a, the price of A drops to 40 Naira and the price of B remains at 50 Naira. So I can buy 1.1 of B and one of A because I'm not, in all, I'm not spending more than my 100 Naira, okay? Now, let us say, let us assume that we go to the market and we have only 100 Naira and we need dollars. The woman selling the first dollar, all right? Is selling it at 50 to one, right? No, at 30 to one. I can buy, I can buy one, uh, this amount of dollar here and then, whatever is left over, but she has only one unit, exactly. right? So I, so I now go and buy the other, right? Now, so now the flowers of Nigeria, you go to the market, you go to, first of all, they go to where the cheap one, Central Bank, okay. how much is there? There's, let me buy $1 million at four, 430, great. Then how much, they tell you, ask the treasurer, what, how much do we have left? We now have only, 600 million naira left. We are going to the power market and buy so that we cannot bring our goods. Pressure. That is all right. Now, on, two days later, Flamis of Nigeria goes to the same market and the woman who sold, the center bank who sold 430 now says, no, it's now 500. Okay. It's still better than the other one at 700. Mm -hmm. Bring me that, bring me one. But the amount, the amount of money left in his pocket is less. So he goes to the mother and says, okay, we have the dollar. Okay, this is all I have. So the animal says, but I have to sell dollar, right? If that happens across the country, the mother has to bring down his price. If not, nobody will buy the dollar. Okay. So what am I what am I trying to say? I'm saying that the theory that says that if power market, if official market depreciates, the power market will depreciate in turn. Is assuming that there's enough, there's extra income somewhere. The assumption, the fundamental assumption that that income is fixed, and that once you bought more of one, you have less available to buy of the other, right? And that is why we say that if that prior market goes down to 450, right, that official window goes down to 450, what is left to buy other other dollars is less, and therefore the official the Higher market rate will come down from 740 all the way to 690. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so Michael here has a question asking if you can explain what happened yesterday in the UK bond market to prevent strategic financial stress and what will be the long-term effect of that intervention? Um, to be honest with you, uh, I think that there are interventions in the market. There are, to start with, there's intervention in the uh, money market. Um, in other words, uh, anchor borrowers and all these sort of programs. There are intervention funds. There's intervention in the foreign exchange market. All of these things are, to a large extent, come to what uh, we can call in pure good economics subsidies. But subsidies are distortion to prices. In other words, subsidies are reverse taxes. 
they distort prices and add, they are basically additional extra demand or extra income, right? And when you take that distortion, distortionary variable away from the normal variable, markets return to where they are efficiently priced, okay? And therefore, uh, I, I don't like interventions. Uh, and I don't, I think they are, as a free market economist, I believe that let the economics economy take care of itself and then you can intervene to support the needy and uh, the less privileged. But you cannot do it, you cannot, your starting point, I mean, issue cannot be subsidies because what happens is that you are distorting the, the curves, well, the curves in, in economics, the average revenue curve, the, the average cost curve, the marginal cost curve. You know, you had, and once you, once you move any of those curves in any direction, it changes the entire picture. Economists will tell you that, and that, that is. So any true economic thinker must know that there's a very dangerous thing to do, right? So it is, first of all, in economics, you don't say, you don't start by saying, oh, you know, uh, there'll be a pardon on the price. Or something. But you are told that if demand curve slope downwards to the right, and uh, the supply curve goes upwards to the uh, left or whatever you uh, remember. But, and that if you do this, this goes here, yeah, this goes, and it is later on, they begin to talk now, when you come to areas of public finance, they say, oh, okay, there are some things I use, subsidies, and then they, they will now tell you the distortionary impact of that. Um, on equilibrium. So that's that's how economics is taught and how economic thinkers believe. And I, I have no doubt in my mind that whoever Adam Smith and all the others, and all these big, kids, big, big thinkers were definitely right. They were smarter than all of us today. And they were very right. And they understood human, in the end, it's social sciences, human behavior that we are looking at here. Thank you, sir. Sure. There, there are so many questions that we cannot touch, um, but it, maybe you can just answer this last question. There, there are actually a couple of questions around, you know, equities. Um, so, you know, there was um, something about, you know, the negative year-to-day stock return on yes. a number of equities, despite improving performance in the um, in the in the stock in the companies themselves. I know, I, I, I hear you. Yes. So let me let me let me first explain this so that we can all understand this. Um, every investor is looking for what we call total return, looking for capital gains and dividend to get your yield. Right? That's given. That's one on one investment. Yeah. But. There are some components of the return that have to relate to other things. One of the major components of the return is the dividend yield. That is the, the dividend as a percentage of the price of the stock today, and the dividend as a percentage of the price, expected price in future. And you are making choices. Economics is a science of choice and a science of scarcity. You are making choices. One of the choices you are making is that, should I put my money in a risk-free asset, like a treasury bill and get 10%, or should I take a risk and buy Nestle, right? And get some upside on the capital, but also get a dividend. If the upside on the capital is say 12% and the dividend is 10%, I'm looking at 22% compared to, so I said, forget, I don't want to hear about the federal government's treasury bill. But if and some, some, there are some people who, who are dividend hunters who just go there and say, I want dividend. If the dividend I'm getting today as a percentage of the price is 4% and I can get 10% on treasury bills, I will shut the equity, I will put the equity down. So what are they saying? What the people are saying is that if I bought Guinness at 80 Naira, and Guinness paid me seven Naira dividend, right? I'm getting 9% 9, 9 or 9.5 or 10%. And I'm still getting to an upside. So it makes sense for me to buy Guinness. 
But if I buy a stock which the dividend yield gives me anything less than the treasury rate, two things can happen. Either the earnings of that company and dividend increases, or the price of that stock must come down to give me a yield that is equivalent to what I'm getting in the treasury rate. So the moment, what has happened today is that policy rate has increased, but people are not watching. People are watching to see what the treasury bill rate is. When that treasury bill rate goes to 11, 12, 13%, you will see that those stock prices are going to come down lower. But there's, a, there's an opportunity to, do, to make money out of that as well, but that's a different story altogether. So that's what the market is doing. Two, because of the lack of confidence in the currency. So people are saying, look, I don't care what it is. I am not interested. Just give me an hour and let me go and buy the dollars and get out of here, right? So what are they doing? Those people are now saying, you know, look, I, basically I, I, want to, I want to sell my stocks to get cash, get the cash to change the dollars. But with stocks, there are liquid stocks and illiquid stocks. And let's look at the market turnover. Market turnover yesterday was 0.009 percent of market capitalization. So it means that people are coming to the market to sell shares and people are not there to buy it. If you have a market where if you have a, an industry where the only thing, the only thing that turns around, or you go to a whole market like Dubai or Ibo, and only one percent of what is brought to the market is bought in one day, that market will close down within two or within a week. Why would I carry my things from my house and go to the market and sit down for money tonight and nobody buys anything? So people just sell whatever they and go away, right? So one, some stocks are being punished because they are liquid and successful. Nestle lost 10% yesterday. And I guess, I, I bet you to lose another 10% today because, because of angry investors who are saying, look, just sell and let me get out of here. But there is an opportunity because Nestle has a lot of upside. It's very expensive. Any trading at a high multiple, any multiple now. But I think that is what is going on. One, people are marking down shares so they can get an equivalent dividend yield to the treasury risk free rate. Two, they are looking for liquid stocks to sell so that they can take cash out and leave and leave the country or whatever it is. If I may to use that word. And therefore, what to do? To look for those stocks where the dividend yields are still higher, and who have the financial muscle and earnings. To do that, we just showed you Presco, just showed you Okomo. Uh, MTN is still MTN is highly priced, but if I if I fast forward and look at 5G and all of that, then you begin to see some interesting things. So I don't know. Uh, Thank you, I sir. Did, I did yeah. know you whether I answered your question. Thank you, sir. That's I mean, for us who are asset managers, those are very um um, important points to note. So thank you very much. I will obviously can't take any more questions because we've run out of time, but um, <laughs> obviously because it's always an interesting session. Thank you, sir. At Alpha Morgan Capital, we know that wealth creation is not just for you alone, but for the next generation as well. <laughs> Ooh, that's my boy. Congratulations, dear. <laughs> we at Alpha Morgan understand that every effort you make daily is a journey to create sustainable wealth. That's why Alpha Morgan stays committed to helping you sustain generational growth in wealth so you can focus on other things. Alpha Morgan, funds management, investment banking, financial advisory. Alpha Morgan, your investment banking institution. Go to www.alphamorgan.com. Call 081-51-717171. Alpha Morgan, growing.